Did you know that one Muslim man saved as many as a thousand lives from one of the worst genocides in history? You see, when Rwanda gained its independence from Belgium in 1962, there were two main ethnicities living there. You had the Hutus who were a majority and the Tutsis who were a minority. And there was a lot of friction between the two. The French supported the Hutus in making a government, helping them to rule over the Tutsis. And the Tutsis, on the other hand, did not accept this and they rebelled, starting a civil war in the country in 1990. Three years later, the Hutu president managed to sign a peace treaty with the Tutsis, but this didn't last for long. The following year, he was assassinated when the airplane he was in was shot down with a missile. Till this day, no one knows exactly for sure who did it. Maybe it was the Tutsis who were rebelling against his government, and maybe it was the Hutus who were opposed to peace with the Tutsis. Either way, what happened next was one of the bloodiest and most violent and tragic events in modern history. On April 7th, 1994, the day after the assassination, the Hutus took to the street and started massacring the Tutsis. Soldiers, police, and militia executed Tutsi politicians and any Hutus who happened to support them. They armed Hutu civilians with machetes and clubs and other weapons and told them to kill their Tutsi neighbors and destroy or steal their property. They erected checkpoints and barricades and killed any Tutsis who passed through. And it was from these ashes that a hero arose. Mbaye Diagne was a Muslim from Senegal. He studied in military school and became a captain in the Senegalese army before joining a UN peacekeeping mission in Rwanda. And when genocide broke out, Mbaye was in the capital city and he heard rumors that the Hutu prime minister had been assassinated because she was too moderate. He rushed to her home and found her four children hiding from the assassins who had just killed their mother and he was afraid that they would come back for them. So he took the kids, hid them in his car, covered them with blankets and smuggled them through a bunch of checkpoints until finally getting them to the airport and sending them out of the country. The UN forbade him from involving himself in the conflict but Mbaye refused to follow orders. He was alone but he knew what he had to do. For the next 35 days he spent every waking moment trying to smuggle out as many people as he could. He went wherever he could find Tutsis and hid them in his car, driving them past checkpoints, dropping them off at either the Hotel de Mil Colones or the Amahoro Stadium, both of which were under UN protection. And to be fair, the UN didn't rebuke him for disobeying orders, but they didn't send any soldiers to help him either. Each time he crossed a checkpoint, he was alone and he knew that he could be killed at any moment, especially if they found out he was helping the Tutsis. But he was smart. He used his extensive contacts in the military and the militias to help him. He bribed soldiers at the checkpoints and he had just this amazing ability to defuse tense situations with quick jokes. In one instance, he stood between a Hutu priest and a woman the priest was about to kill, shouting at him, why are you trying to kill this woman? You must not do this because if you do this, the whole world will know. And it somehow managed to convince the priest to let her live. In another instance, a convoy full of Tutsis was attacked by Hutus with machetes. Mbaye got on top of one of the trucks and started striking and kicking them, fending them off while he himself had no weapons. But sadly, after over a month of saving both moderate Hutus and Tutsi civilians in a bizarre twist of fate. He was stopped at a Hutu checkpoint. And at the same time, a soldier from a Tutsi militia fired a mortar at the checkpoint, blasting the area and killing Mbaya in the process. The genocide continued for another two months and by the end of it, over a million people were left dead. But interestingly enough, there was a movie made back a while ago called The Hotel Rwanda which tells the story of the refugees in the hotel that Mbaya brought them to. Though I'm not sure if he was mentioned in the movie or not. May Allah count Mbaya from amongst the shuhada, the Muslim man from Senegal who died trying to save the innocent civilians of Rwanda. Like and follow for more Muslim facts.